Hello and welcome to Maintenance 101, Troubleshooting and Diagnosing Hardware Problems. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. This video will discuss best practices on troubleshooting issues, handling a crisis, and working with technical support to achieve a solution. It will also briefly cover the built-in hardware diagnostic application called System Level Diagnostics, or SLDiag for short. The troubleshooting process. Build a crisis action team. If the issues you are facing significantly affect the company, you need to tackle it as a team. The quickest way to make a problem worse is for everyone to run around in circles with their hair on fire. Split your team into the following areas of responsibility. Task managers. This is generally someone in management. They are responsible for reducing wasted time and effort by delegating and tracking status of tasks. If multiple organizations within the company are involved, you may need multiple task managers. Communications. These individuals should have good organizational skills and note-taking skills. Their primary responsibility is to keep information flowing to and from the task managers and technicians. Their secondary role is to be the focal point for communication to and from end users and to squash rumors. Technicians. This is the group tasked with collecting information, diagnosing the symptoms, and implementing the proposed solutions. Collect all the symptoms being reported by end users and members of the IT department and group them by affected systems or users. It only takes one report of water in the server room to make sense of all the reports of offline applications and failing servers. Also, find out what changes in hardware and software have been implemented recently. This is where the change logs mentioned in the Maintenance 100 video come in handy. For example, a typo in the configuration of a core network switch can create a domino effect of symptoms. Verify the symptoms. Obtain more details on the nature of the symptom and when they started. System and application log files are the most reliable sources of information. Segregate previously known symptoms and unresolved issues. If your team cannot distinguish between new and old symptoms, they may may waste effort on troubleshooting symptoms unrelated to the current crisis. Define the desired end state. Not all problems will be immediately resolvable and there may, may be many problems to resolve. If a natural disaster wipes out half of your data center, you are not going to be back to business as usual by the end of the day. Determine what needs to be done in the next hour, the next day, and the next week. By establishing an immediate goal, you can prioritize efforts. For example, if the company generates income from a website, then fixing those issues are more important than solving printer issues. And remember, fixing payroll processing is always a high priority. Proposed solutions. Encourage your team to brainstorm and propose any ideas for resolving the problem. Reach outside the team for help from consultants and vendors. They may be able to bring in temporary manpower and equipment to get through the crisis. Prioritize the solutions by time to implement, cost, and benefit versus risk. Choose the best solution or solutions and create a plan to implement them. Test the solutions. Think and then act. Follow the Hippocratic Oath to first do no harm. Do not make the situation worse by implementing a knee-jerk solution without testing it on a small scale first. Implement the solution. With checklists in hand and positive test results, begin systematically resolving problems and verifying sy symptoms disappear. Watch the Install 100 video for tips on creating checklists. Document the problems and solutions for fixing them. This may not be the end of the problems. Your solutions may turn out to be temporary band-aids. Sometimes the environmental conditions which create the problems go away and are the real cause of the problems disappearing and not the actions you've taken. For instance, a problem may suddenly go away at the end of the day and then return the next morning. Well, what changed? The end users all went home and relieved the workload on the affected systems. Before you call support, unless your storage system is non-functional or has stopped serving data, first make an effort to resolve the issue yourself. A quick search of the knowledge base may turn up a solution. If the issue involves an application, check the application vendor's knowledge base as well. 
Search engines are also good research tools for finding information other users have posted online. You may not find an answer during your research, but you will be better able to explain your problem and to understand the solution provided. Try to decipher the error messages and run diagnostic tools to gather more information. The NetApp support website has a feature named Syslog Translator, which can interpret the data on tap error message strings and system logs. Minor nuisances or what if type questions may be better resolved by posting a message on a user form. When you cannot find an answer on your own, it is time to call vendor technical support. Optimize your tech support experience. Before you pick up the phone, take a few minutes to prepare before calling NetApp technical support. You will need the system serial number to open a technical support case. If the system is online, collect the log files and try to send out an auto support. Give your contact information early on in the event you are disconnected. Provide secondary contact information as well. Then, as clearly and concisely as possible, explain as what happening and what errors or symptoms you have seen. Describe the environment the system is providing data to. Is it virtualized? Are only SIFS users affected? What changes have recently been made to the environment? That minor software upgrade to a network switch may have inadvertently disabled a port setting. What actions have you taken to resolve the issue? Achieve maximum support. You've opened a tech support case and it seems no progress is being made, so what do you do? First, verify the case notes are addressing the correct issue. Miscommunication is a leading cause of receiving poor support. Ensure the support engineer is not researching the wrong issue. If you are given an explanation or solution that seems unbelievable, do not be afraid to ask for supporting documentation. Just like you would ask for a second opinion if a doctor recommended amputation for a splinter in your finger, ask to speak to another engineer for confirmation on the explanation or proposed solution. Perhaps the support engineer is inexperienced and misunderstood the issue or the ramifications of the proposed solution. Don't immediately demand to speak to a supervisor because you are on hold for five minutes or you don't like the solution because it is inconvenient. Alternatively, do not let a support engineer repeatedly miss deadlines to call back or keep throwing multiple solutions at you hoping for a miracle. And remember to speak to supervisors to let them know when the support engineer pulled a rabbit out of a hat or helped explain to your management how you did everything right. Lastly, document every time you open a technical support case with a vendor. Keep track of who you spoke with and how long it took to receive both a reply and a solution. System Level Diagnostic Fundamentals SL Diag is a diagnostic tool accessible in maintenance mode to test and diagnose the NetApp system hardware. The default system wide test runs for about 25 minutes. Generally, tests should only be run against the components suspected of having issues. System memory tests take very long to run, so should only be tested when error messages indicate uncorrectable memory errors. Verify expansion card functionality. In this slide, we will use testing of an expansion card as an example of using SL Diag. The proper way to start up the diagnostic tool is to start from the loader prompt and use the boot diags command. The next step is to clear any previous diagnostic results and then display a list of all the devices in the system. There are multiple tests that can be enabled, configured, or disabled. But in most cases, you will use the predefined test for a device by specifying the device type. Tests run in the background, so you need to check on the status of long-running test. When a test finishes, a console message will appear stating that the test either passed or failed. You will need to add the dash long flag to get details about the test results. You should not use SL Diag to test flash cache cards unless directed by NetApp technical support. The SL Diag tests can be destructive to these cards, so are not enabled by default. While it is always a best practice to log the output of console sessions, you should consider logging mandatory when running system diagnostics to permanently capture all output. To access the SL Diag utility, use the boot underscore diags command from the loader prompt. This will bypass a special boot menu and go straight into the maintenance mode menu.
The SLDiag device show command will list all the primary device types in the system. The SLDiag test show command displays all the available tests to run against the primary devices and whether those tests are enabled or not. Generally, disabled tests should only be enabled after consulting with NetApp technical support. Tests are enabled or disabled with the SLDiag test modify command by specifying the device type, in this case memory, and the unique test index number. Before running tests, it is a good idea to run the clear status command to discard old error messages to prevent confusion during troubleshooting. First, we will demonstrate running the default set of comprehensive tests. The output has been truncated from 15 minutes to 1 minute. Tests run in the background and you can check on their status with the SLDiag device status command. And the system will notify you when all tests have completed. Run the status command again for a condensed list of the results. Use the dash long flag to see a detailed output of the results. or add a modifier to only show failed results. Before running additional tests, ensure you have captured all the output for any failed test. Then use the clear status command to remove the old messages. The next example will be a test against a specific network port. Use the HALT command to exit the SLDiag utility and from the loader prompt you can then boot into data on tap as usual. You can find other useful videos in the NetApp channel on various topics.